Hello, so this is a quick tutorial on the Touch Mix 16 by QSC. This is how the mixer looks when it's shut off. So I'm just going to go over some of the key features real quick. It's called QSC Touch Mix 16 because it has 16 channels that you can plug in instruments into. In addition to that, it also has a bunch of outputs in the back. This will be for a different purpose. This will be your um, auxiliaries for monitors and stuff like that. And then it's got your main left and right outputs. So it's backwards right now, but when you see it, uh, main right, main left. From here you would go to your PA system from those two. Main left, main right. Those two outputs that I was just pointing out to. And so the first thing is you see is these holes here. These are microphone inputs. So any cable that has this type of connection would go to your microphone on the female and on the male would go into the channel that you want to use. So perhaps channel one. Now if you look down, the next thing you see on the board is these little knobs. These are nothing more than signal level or trim or it's not a fancy word for volume. So if I plug a microphone in number one and I start saying check, 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 I want to make sure that I can, this is my first level of, of volume. It should always be around middle. Uh, but over here it's going to be just ridiculously loud and feedback and problems. So let's just suggest to be in the middle as a safe guide. That's pretty much what you see when you have your mixer off. And you know, another some other features. If you want to listen to what what's what's being played in the main system, you can uh, from the main you, uh, main speakers you can use your headphones. We'll go here. Um, monitor Q and headphones are sim are pretty much the same thing, just for monitoring purposes. Uh, stereo in. They have four channels, so it's 1718, 1920. But this would be a cable, a stereo cable. Uh, it would look sort of like this, but uh, with two lines as opposed to one little black line. That's, that's, this is just a, a quarter inch for an instrument. And, but for a stereo, uh, like a piano, a keyboard, or a MP3 player, it would have two lines. And then you, you can plug it in there. And this mixer also lets you plug in four instruments directly, so this cable could go in there. There's four, four of those. So that's your 16 channels very quickly. So let's go ahead and turn it on. When you turn on the mixer, you're always going to come to the main page. Home. So if, if that screen ever changes to anything else, like this, and you don't know what's happening, you just press home and it should, should take you back. To the main, to the main page. The way that this this I'm gonna try to zoom in, see if it, if it stays in focus, so that you can see. Let's do that. Okay. So the way that this uh, is is arranged is that the 16 channels of the board are laid in pages, eight tracks, eight channels at a time. So the first page they're selectable from up here. Uh, the first page has 1 through 8, second page has 9 through 16. And that's uh, the main the main thing you should be worried about. The, the rest of the stuff is a bit uh, more advanced and you don't have to think about it right now. So when you have an instrument plugged into let's say channel 1, if you plug something into channel 1 then this is how you're going to control the instruments that are plugging into the, all of the channels. So let me zoom in on this out a little bit and show again. So you plug in something in track one and then you select channel one and you can control it. The same thing with whatever else you plug in here will be corresponding to the channels that, that are here and they're all selectable by being touched then this page and this page whatever mix you have going on it's all selected it's all controlled by the master fader which is this one 
So you use to select and use the wheel, and that's how you change the uh, the position of the master fader or any fader or anything in the board. Select and move, and then with the wheel, and the wheel moves it. So master, it's always a good idea when you're plugging in things and you're starting to use the board to keep it on the bottom, all the way to zero, so there's no pops or clicks when you're plugging in instruments and things like that. And when you have everything plugged in and everything ready to go, you can bring up your, your master, keep it where that gray line is, which would be uh, called unity or zero and uh, that's always a good uh, it's the proper place to be so that is how you deal with uh, the tracks that you see on here and you can change everything about these tracks you can change the names you can uh, give effects to them you can do anything you want um, the next important thing about this is going to menu and you see the scenes so the, the mixer remembers different settings that have happened uh, that you've created for different uh, situations perhaps uh, you did an event that had um, a band and you want to save it so that would be considered a scene so then you go there to scenes and you'll see what's saved what's saved in the column that says mixer are the scenes that that you have created and saved. In your mixer, there should be two scenes that I created and saved. One is what's called speech and music, I believe, and the second one would be a full band. Let's, let's think uh, about the first one, that is the more sim simple one. And I'm gonna choose one that's, that I have here that is similar to the one that you have. So you select it, you press recall, and it says yes. And now the mixer has just recalled that scene. And in my scene, is slightly different than the one that you would have, but it's it's similar because it's really just a couple of speech speaking microphones and a music uh, channel. So if you want to affect uh, the first channel, let's say it's your it's your microphone, you will select that channel. You can bring bring the volume up and down, but if you want to add some effects or EQ or anything like that, let me go back. You go to where the name is of the channel. You tap there and it opens up this screen and you can have different screens that, that open up from there you would probably if you want to add reverb you go to FX you can raise it select it and raise it if you want to add EQ you can mess with the EQ by just touching and dragging uh, these compression and gate are uh, more advanced type of effects that you don't that are not perceivable very much and not uh, at this stage you shouldn't worry too much about and when you're done playing with your adjustments, then you want to go back to the main page and you press home, take you back. So then you can do the same thing to the next channel. You plug it in, you give trim, when to say channel two, you give it volume. And then if you want to affect any of the parameters, you go into that page. And that's how you recall a scene and how you um, control the tracks within that scene. If you ever have more than eight channels, you're gonna to have to go to the second page and and that's where you can have more, more the rest of the instruments that you, if you ever plug that many. Now, the other thing is important in this mixer, in your mixer, is that it's uh, the best way to work with this mixer is to control it with an iPad, that they're designed for that. In order to link an iPad to this mixer, you will go to menu, uh, you go to uh, remote control, and here it shows you the devices that are connected to the, to, the, to the iPod right now, to the mixer, I'm sorry. But in order to connect to the mixer, the mixer puts out a Wi-Fi signal without internet, but it's its own uh, inter Wi-Fi signal. So you go to network, and that will tell you the name. That's the name of the of the signal that you will see in your device. So you you choose that network, and you put the password that is in your mixer right now. So you read the password that's there. You apply, and then your device will connect to the mixer. Once you have that connected, then you can go to remote control, 
choose that the, your device, whether it's your iPad or or your iPhone, and then you uh, you grant it the access that you want. So you could say, I want my iPad Pro to have full control of the mixer, and or you can assign different things. It's is a, a little more advanced, but it's worth mentioning. So let's go back. I want to get out of here. I want to go back to my channels, home. Here's my channel one, my channel two. And when you're confident with what, what, you, what you have plugged in and you're seeing signal in each of the channels, we, we said we were going to keep it at zero while we do all that. And then you, then you start raising slowly so, then you, and so you can make sure you're hearing what you're seeing. And then you just work with your volume. So that would be a really quick tutorial on how to use this mixer. And I will follow up with some more uh, sp specific videos, especially as the needs arise and, and, by, and also in written form. If you have any questions, I'm always available via phone in real time. So please reach out.